real real treat getting to to kind of talk about um trying to add some mid game and some <laughs> different layers of uh of bullshit you know um smoother transitions and i guess what you're really wanting to develop right is it's you either do damage or you faint the damage get the overreaction go hard in the other direction and then have a clear kind of follow through right it's 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 the follow through mm -hmm. jumping to that next stage and and having that mid game either finishing blow or way of building a really good advantage in the mid game to the point where you can kind of smother them that you're kind of trying to evolve at the moment right yeah and i also have issues where um Stuff like a build I really like in ZVP in particular is 12 pull proxy hatch. A lot of times I'll get, you know, a lot of damage done and I'll actually come out ahead. But then I play overly safe um, or I'll make spores the incorrect times because the game is such in a chaotic state. I'm not exactly sure um, in those kind of situations when I should be doing certain things. So I think I put myself in an even game again and then I usually die to some kind of weird stuff. <laughs> Yeah, because I mean your oil ins are so refined. It's actually it's actually so good. I mean, <laughs> taking a map off Euthermal, taking a map off Australia, um, absolutely not, um, not not things to scoff at. Especially, I mean, I I found it so funny that Euthermal went three racks first you, and I was like, oh okay. If you know someone's very very all in a lot of the time, but you're not sure exactly what, I'm like, I guess this is actually a really clever kind of Terran versus Erg one size fits all solution where like. The weakness of three racks is it's so inflexible offensively. But if you don't care about having to attack your opponent until a bit later, it's like, I was like, oh, that's really smart. That's you, Thermal, you know, thinking outside of the box in that series. And I was like, oh, that's actually the worst thing that you could face off against <laughs> with uh, with what you were doing in that series. So hats off to you, Thermal, for thinking of that. I think yeah, very few I've people only, would actually do that. I've only faced that once before. 4GG did it to me once. And I was really confused as because I thought it was 2 on one That's why I thought against you, Thermal, as well. Because that's a normal thing, which yeah. normally I just delay my third and get more lings out, and it's okay. But he had so many marines, I was like, "Oh my goodness!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a ridiculous, ridiculous marine push. Um, <laughs> all right, well, um, hey, before we we get into it, because I want to I want to just talk through your builds, your follow ups. We can just kind of like basically watch some of your replays and stuff. Did you have specific kind of games you wanted to look at as examples? Uh, I marked a couple. Okay. Um, before we do that, I was thinking we could just spend two minutes quickly talking mechanics. Um, I, I know you probably don't <laughs> want to spend too long doing it. I think you're using um, the the kind of the budget camera locations, as we've called it. It's perfectly fine. Still, some pros use that. Um, how do you inject again? Do you just double tap those and just box the queen, right? Yep. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So the the thing is, um, with the mouse speed um and stuff like that uh here so you if you've never gone into your mouse and keyboard so you're on windows right yeah okay so you've never checked those settings in windows right um if i did it was a long long time ago i don't think so though all right well let's just very quickly spend two minutes doing this so just go into your windows search bar and search for keyboard properties or just keyboard it should be keyboard control panel hopefully comes up uh -huh. and the same thing for mouse uh mouse settings so we want to open two different menus and in our mouse settings we want to open up additional mouse options is the exact menu that we want and it should be two very similar little boxes that open on our uh on our My man. yes so you got those open uh-huh Cool. So keyboard properties, let's start there. Um, you actually want to have the... Uh, hold on a sec. Ugh. Sorry. Um, so the repeat uh, delay, I believe, is probably one bar from the right side, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so we want that on the very far right. <clears throat> um, so basically, this is really important because that starts one bar. So you put put it on the, the, the longest possible just to test it. So if you drag that to the far left and you see there's this click here and hold down a key to test repeat rate. So just imagine you're building Zerglings, just hold down the, the Z or the Z key. And you can kind of see there's that delay before it starts holding it down. So when yeah, you're producing yeah. off four or five hatcheries, that's really important. So you put it and then you put it on the shortest possible. You see how much quicker it can toggle, basically to queue up 10, 20 Zerglings at once. Um, 
So that's that's a really nice thing. The repeat rate should already be the fastest possible. Obviously, if that's on slow, that's terrible. You literally can't <laughs> build units by holding a key down. You just have to spam the key really hard. So that's really useful for allowing you to just produce a bit smoother in the mid game. And it doesn't affect you if you're always on a low economy. Like it just, you're never building enough units for it to matter. But when you've got 30 pairs of Zerglings building at once, it just starts to take way too long. Like mid game Zerg versus Terran, there's a lot of awesome pretty mid-game oriented plays you can do where you're just swamping your opponent in Ling Bane. Vanya did it first Hero Marine to beat him the other week off like 60 drones, 50 drones. Um, needed to be spamming production like crazy, right? So um, uh -huh. we can actually go further with that. I'm, I'm not going to show this necessarily, but um, I sent you an image. That's just a screenshot that a pro gamer sent me like a couple years ago that I just have to remind me. So if you want, you can go above and beyond. We don't want to waste our time today. But you see that image on Discord I sent you? Basically, yeah. you just go into, um, I think it's just regedit. Let me just check. Basically, I think, uh, I think sort yeah, of had a guide on something like this. Yeah, you just go into regedit. So you basically just search and in, in, in there. you can message me if you can't figure it out later, but I don't want to waste your time now fiddling with it. Okay. Basically, go to regedit and emulate those settings and that'll make it even more even like quicker repeat rate and delay than is possible in the Windows menu, essentially. Okay. So that's just a nice little bonus. Zergs are particularly obsessed with it. Um, mm -hmm. With the mouse options, um, this is something, obviously, as a very high-level player already, I'm very... I'm not like, do this thing, because you're very used to what you're doing. I just want to know what you're doing more than anything. So if you go to pointer options... Okay. Uh, where is your thing on that slow fast point of speed bar is it smack bang in the middle on the sixth yep. bar right on the middle perfect yep six bar and is your enhanced point of precision turned on yep so that's the mouse acceleration that's what most people don't use there's been a few very good pro gamers over the years danish bunny who was one of the best terrans for quite a few years in heart of the swarm uh uh, did you thermal maybe used to use it I, there has been a few there's been a few really good pro gamers with micro who've used it and there's always like one pro lol player two dota players two cs players there's always like the freaks who just got so used to using it and everyone else is like no it's bad um people argue that because it that increases your mouse speed as you move it it basically leads to more inaccuracy easier to do misclicks right because your, your mouse starts skipping pixels as it just darts across the screen Harder to have the same consistent muscle memory, which is why most of us say turn it off. Um, I'm just going to leave that as potential advice if you feel like trying it out after today. If you do, you're going to have to reset a little bit. It's going to set you back a bit. I don't know uh -huh. if that's worth it or not. As I said, you could literally be a pro gamer without it. If you're like, you know what? I miss click all the time and I suck. Maybe you can be bothered investing some time in learning that. But otherwise, I don't think it's really worth it unless you're like no 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 i feel this is holding me back and i'm super motivated to do it but it's a real investing in loss to kind of build back up from the ground it's not necessarily the priority okay cool <clears throat> okay so um i'll just note that down oh by the way okay yeah you've got the document open fantastic so let me just write some notes um i like to have this top info there at the top i guess i'll just put this down here because this makes it really easy if we don't coach for ages for me to just see all your info there. Um, okay, coaching 14th September. Just make sure this is recorded. Uh, mechanics, so basically we adjusted repeat delay, uh, uh, go into reg edit later to edit more to pro gamer settings <laughs> and mouse consider turning off mouse acceleration um, I guess the other thing you can consider there is check DPI and consider lowering um, to 600 to 1000 if you're using very high. Do you know what DPI you use? <laughs> the last time I checked, it was 2500. Yeah. So you, you're, you've got a very fast mouse then. So it would be pretty hard for you to be super accurate when there's lots of multitasking going on. But the human body is incredible. The human brain is incredible. Like I used to play with 1800 for the first five years of me playing StarCraft, um, pretty similar. And yeah, it, it took a while to, to get used to not. Um, wasn't actually that long, I would say, but yeah. Um, the last setting there, your mouse scroll speed in game. Um, so let's go in game now. Okay. 
uh, gameplay, or sorry, mouse and keyboard, actually. Mm -hmm. And mouse scroll speed. What, what do you have that at? Uh, 29%. Okay, so that's even... Maru has the slowest of any pro gamer. He uses 40%. Um, <laughs> I normally tell people at least 50, preferably 60 to 100%. I use 89. A lot of pros use 100. Um, do you, you don't hold down the middle mouse button or anything uh -uh. like that, do you, to scroll? No, I just usually go to the edge of the screen. Okay, so that's something I would really advise you double uh, to 50% or maybe go up 10% at a time. But I think that's really big in terms of your ability to manage, especially once you start getting to bigger fights, right? If you're doing like, okay, I've done my opening, but now I'm going for like a 50 drone, a 60 drone giant big roach surround or a big Ling Bane flank or something like that, you know? Um, the ability to quickly scroll there is going to be going to be really important. So mouse scroll speed, currently twenty nine percent. I advise sixty to one hundred percent. Maru uses forty percent, so I'd say that's that's the minimum. <laughs> um, but yeah, try upping it, maybe five or ten percent a day, and it'll be pretty pain painless because um, you you'll just your muscles will adjust essentially very quickly. Um, I often in the past, when I, when I first changed that, I just like went straight from 20%, which is the default to like 80 or whatever. And it took me um, the first few days felt, or the first day or two felt like really janky. But I found that that's one of the things you're actually quickest to adjust to. If you just say, that's cool, I'll get used to it. Like within a day or two, it's like, oh, this is natural. Uh, for whatever reason, mouse scroll speed seems to be something people adapt to pretty well. Um, I think that's the end of the mechanic stuff, dude. I think that's that's all fine. Um, cool. You you normally control group like uh, hatcheries. Uh, you said you put those what hotkey? Did you put your hatcheries on again? I uh, usually one through six, and then I have them all bound on tilde. One through six, and then they're all down on tilde. Right, right. Okay, cool. And then all your army hotkeys are on your um, your mouse, right? Uh huh. Okay, cool, cool. All right, let's just let's just like leave that because I don't think there's any big optimizing there or anything. But that's awesome. Um, okay, so I'm in chat channel like pig and piggy on North America. You just go like forward slash join uh, maybe pig2 or piggy, P-I-G-G-Y. Um, there we go. Shoot me an invite and let's get into some replays and let's start talking about some strategy. Um, so yeah, this is this is always so bloody interesting, man, because... The, uh, the tricks that we can play as an aggressive player are really good, especially once someone gets our, our respect. So um, let's just get into whichever matchup or replay you'd like to look at first, and we can start using that just as a, a bit of kind of material. There'll be a lot of theory crafting and talking about, okay, well, if we did X, Y instead. Um, can I have the lobby host, please, so I can steer? Yep. Thank you. Hmm. And whenever I talk about these My mechanics, man. there's always people sharing things in chat saying this or that. They say, you know, Serral uses very low scroll speed. He actually drags. I'm going to message him right now and check because <laughs> people share a lot of misinformation about this stuff. Sometimes they're right, sometimes they're not. Um... Oh. Hey, Serral, random question. What scroll speed do you use in SC2? You scroll maybe half the time and drag scroll the other half, right? Because I know he does a hybrid. Um, Snoot's the first one who did that. And we were all like, you're absolutely so strange, Snoot. Like, who the fuck does this? And he's like, I think it's object it's obje better. He's like, I've just thought about it and having to move your mouse to the edge of the screen is less efficient. And he was like, I'm gonna learn how to do it because I think in the long run it'll be better. And he basically is like the godfather of modern mechanics in, um, in StarCraft 2. So <laughs> he, he said he taught everyone to lower our DPI, how to use better, you know, optimized mechanics and stuff. He used a precursor to the core where he felt that having his camera locations kind of underneath his his 
fingers where they were already resting was better. Like he did some really cool stuff. A big thank you, Cold Hot Coco, by the way. Thank you so much for the gifted subs, guys. I'll give you guys a crazy thank yous at the end of the coaching. I just want to stay really focused on this, guys. Thank you so much for the love, though. Um, so this here is going to be a really peculiar game. You versus Haas. And Haas actually plays super macro if he identifies he's up against a cheeser. But he's yes. really good at doubling down on the defense. Like, he will play so much safer than most players because obviously he kind of understands the threat better than most. So, yeah, um, yeah talk me through it. I really didn't expect that. I had one game one with a uh, all in, so I went into this game trying one of my um, more passive builds. So it's just a seventeen pool, and then my idea was to go into this uh, weird two base hydra thing that Cyril did against Showtime in twenty twenty, uh, mm. where it hits it like uh, it hits. I think roughly around six minutes with nine hydras and a bunch of lings, because um, normally with so many void rays, I kind of expect him to do something like that. I saw the start. Target and I just kind of assumed because most people play that and it'd be safe against a weaker player in his eyes. Mm. So I kind of thought that's what he was going to do. And then he, uh, because I don't get a lot of practice against other stuff because no one plays different stuff on NA really. And NA players are matter. pretty bad at defending cheese in general. Um, I find usually if they know that you're going to cheese, they probably just try and attack you before you attack them, right? Do you get that experience? Uh, it's a little bit of a mix. Sometimes that, or because on NA, it depends on because I have two accounts on NA. I usually keep my cheesing to a barcode, or I'll mm. mix it in with my main account because I want people to hard counter me a little bit just so I get the practice against it. So it really depends. But a lot of people started actually playing really greedy because I would do builds like this, like safety kind of passive builds that could be aggression. So a lot of Terrans would go like super fast 3cc and all this stuff, and they would never actually scout or anything. So I had to start doing unoptimized all-ins. Like I used to do two base uh, muto. I do that almost every ZVT because I just think it's really, I really enjoy it. Mm. And then they started going the greediest things you could imagine. So I had to start mixing in Nidus's and stuff just so they would <laughs> calm down a little bit. <laughs> uh, fair enough, man. All right, so you just spotted Zealot Archon, and you're like, shit. Hydra's kind of weak yeah. versus that. Where's your mind at at this point in the game? Like, what is your kind of plan? Or is it, I mean, I know you, you hadn't really mapped this out. So are you just kind of like, shit, I got to drone up. Are you still going to try to go for an all in? Or do you think you were just a bit lost and you didn't really have a plan at all? My thought process in this game was when I saw the Zealot Archon, I was like, okay, so he's probably going to do the thing where they have, you know, six gates and just do a charge pressure. Which this build is relatively weak against because it's just hydras. But I thought if I pulled all my queens and I had just mass hydras off of a low drone count, it would be enough to hold because I'm on such a low drone count. I thought I would just have enough units, even if it's unoptimized, have a big concave on top of the ramp. Mm. Uh, it was not enough. <laughs> okay, yeah. So you did queue up a few more drones, I guess, because you're like, okay, well, I'm not all in. I need like a little more economy, right? We'll try to build a yeah. few more units. Try um, to make just a few. But... You're going augments first, which is obviously better offensively but actually spines is way better defensively right group spines uh -huh. usually um just getting that extra bit of range uh zerglings are basically worthless because they've got archons and zealots um so it kind of sucks because you you know you're like okay let's get a bane nest let's try to get some banes in to deal with the zealots but but it's going to be a tough one um and this is always kind of tough because you're like well do i pull back to a choke point or do i just set up a big arc on top of the ramp I would probably tend towards the arc on top of the ramp and try to do a little bit of like pulling back sections of the concave, right? Wherever mm -hmm. the, the zealots are getting on top of them a bit too quick and, and pulling in queens. And I mean, the way I would conceive of this is you're both making short-term compositions, right? So if you can crush this fight, if he overcommits into it, you could probably counterattack and win the game, right? Because he won't be able to get up like enough units to deal with it. Like zealots really rely on having equal or higher numbers to actually win fights, right? Yeah. So let's see how this goes. So yeah, I mean, you set up the concave pretty well. No groove spines is a real bummer though. Would have been nice if we at least had it on the way. And you you weren't set up quite as nicely as you could have been, right? Uh -huh. Like you could have been really immaculate with having like just a beautiful fucking spready of hydras just in a nice banana uh, to greet him. Just so you're all shooting at the exact same time. Whereas your hydras kind of got stuck behind each other a little bit here. So if we look at this, I think like... If we've made that decision that we're going to fight out front, I think we absolutely should have already kind of box clicked and, and separated the Hydras a little earlier. And then we could have been a bit more pedantic. Whereas you've spread them out 
but those ones on the north ends up with a bit too much of a concentration of firepower, right? Where we kind of want uh-huh. one third of these hydras sitting smack bang in the middle. And then they're naturally going to fan out into an almost perfect arc really quickly. Whereas you can see these hydras at the top, a lot of them are actually kind of stuck behind each other. Yeah. Now, the other thing here in this sort of game is what about pulling drones? Seems really shit for a sell at Archon, but because this is such a desperate situation, but it's also like a very, you've got a very high damage fragile army. So like any extra tanking power you have, like anything that helps you win this fight, obviously, if you kind of survive with 15, 20 Hydras, it's like awesome. We could probably go win the game. Um, so I think pulling drones in this scenario, definitely something you should consider. What do you think about a um, trying to pull the spores from the natural in the third and making Evos try and wall off as much of this as I can to funnel them in? <clears throat> I think or it's do you like, think just trying in the arc is better? It's so expensive. Um, yeah, that's kind of a tough one. Um, and Hydra's a... Yeah. If you were on two base and it was just on your natural and you already had like a building in the wall, so you just need to drop two Evos, right? That makes more uh. sense, I guess. But dropping like three Evos is so expensive. You would need to have done it very quickly. Would it have helped you? Yeah. Would it have kept you alive? Yes. Um, <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. It's better than dying, right? But at the same time, it's like you kind of need him to overcommit, right? And if you get three Evos, you know, halfway built, and he's probably not going to try to bust through that, right? And and you, you almost need him to throw this army away because... <clears throat> he can be probing up and going size storm and or colossus or whatever it is behind this right he does have four gas he's got plenty of gas so it's it's kind of yeah i, I think that's an okay option but if you don't already have a, a rather narrow choke it's an issue um a lot of the time again sell at archon right with roach ravager especially you would just try to kite this down but that's because roaches are a little faster with roach speed even than muscular augments hydras um just slightly and they're tankier, so you can afford to tank a little bit. Whereas with the Hydras trying to kite Zealot Arc on a bit and then like fall back into the choke points of the mineral lines and stuff, it's kind of dicey. Um, we could make the argument that you could have just hid behind your natural hatch, right? And just say uh-huh. hide in the mineral line of your natural and just give up the third base. That's an option because that naturally means his units are going to funnel through. You could use hold position drones on the mineral line a bit. In general, the Zealots and Archons are all going to be stuck behind each other. The Archons won't be landing hits. So that's an option. Um, I think let's go back earlier, though, and say, hey, we went for a Hydra all-in in the wrong scenario, I guess. and Or if we spotted it, because we spotted the Zealot Arc on a while ago, right? So let's let's look at when we spot what's happening. Also, actually, um, you're doing a bit of an all-in, so you didn't want to invest too much in scouting. But Overseer uh, Scout is one of the most useful things when you go fast tech, right? So if we could have squeezed that in, we could have tried to get an Overseer in to check what was happening. Um, so that's always an option, which would have given you even earlier scouting. But as it is, dude, this is pretty early, right? If we look at this, 545. And when does the fight happen? So you had about a minute and five seconds. So you had plenty of time to get a Baneling Nest and make Banelings actually as well, right? So if we just yeah. had even six or seven banelings here, just to stop his zealots being able to charge up there, that would be so beautiful. Because then your arc of hydras would be so good. Just got to make sure your banelings don't run into the archons before the zealots come in, right? You just yeah. If his zealots pull back, your banelings pull back. If his zealots run forward, your banelings run forward kind of thing. And um, that's just going to slow down him collapsing on top of your army. So if you just made a snap judgment of the baneling nest there, just with the idea of we're just going to get like somewhere between five and 15 slow banes, depending on how long it is until the fight goes by, that changes everything here. Huh. Also, actually, had you started your upgrades yet? You had. Okay. Arguably, you could cancel it and make groove spines, <laughs> but I probably wouldn't think to do that usually because you don't know he's going to attack you just yet. Um, uh-huh. I, I guess his third's pretty late, so you kind of know he's going to poke you, but yeah. So, spot charge Archon with Hydra all in. Immediate Bane Nest, right? Uh, grooved Spines ASAP. I think those would be the two things that are most important. Um, definitely, 
I think against Haas, and in general, not that many people are like non-stop massing Void Rays. Haas will do it some games, but not always. And he does a lot of really weird ground styles. So I'm not sure what the percentage is because I don't get to see much of his Protoss vs. Zerg. But I would be very wary of him doing lots of different kind of ground transitions, even if he opens Stargate. I'm not sure if you've seen more of his PVZ or not. Uh, mainly just from what I've played. I think this is my second series against him. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, other than that, I mean, that's basically you're trying to catch him with like, what, two Void Rays, third base, um, and just kind of no other units, right? And you just kind of like, it's just a crisp, surprising Hydraling uh, Overwhelm that you're kind of looking for with this build, right? Yeah, I mean, sometimes I have like a battery and stuff, but the Hydra DPS is so good, usually you can actually out DPS it, which is kind of nice. Yeah, I mean, if they don't have any Zealots or Adepts on the ground, right? I mean, you could just kind of move onto the Void Rays. Void Rays aren't really high DPS units. It's just that they're uh -huh. really good at pulling back and getting healed by batteries, right? So if you could just kill yeah. the one, you should be fine. Um, Spore timing. So let's double check that. I think it was better than the ones I've cast of you recently, where we did see one or two where it was super duper early. Now, what's interesting here is you did go a very fast, pretty fast Ling speed off your opening. Was this just pool hatch gas, was it? Pool gas oh, okay. Hatch. Actually, usually I do the uh, hatch gas, but I kind of wanted to feign that I was going to do an earlier cheese. Mm. I think this series, this is a while ago, but I'm pretty sure because there's, I have a few different ways to open this way just to kind of keep them on their toes, but. Yeah. Second queen is a little slow to start here. That's pretty big, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is actually really bad. Oh, that's very... Yeah, oh, and then you build it on the natural as well. Uh-oh. Okay, that's, that's huge. Yeah, um... Because the moment it was scouted, you almost should have been in the mindset of like, okay, he's probably going to stop this. If you still want to build the Sixlings, that's kind of fine. Um, if you really want to kill the probe, you do need to kind of put two Zerglings on it to kill it. You know, otherwise it can kind of run forever. But um, uh -huh. that's only if he micros it well, which a lot of people won't. So anyway, so once you saw that he spotted it, your Zerglings come over, there's a Zealot. You know when Adept's about to pop, you should go home now, right? Perfect timing. You see a Stargate go down? Okay, so yeah, all right. I think this is fine. Just forgot the second queen. Um, okay, forgot second queen. Super important. We start that before the first one finishes, especially because we already got, like we said, a pretty quick link speed. You were down on 13 out of 16 on your main for a while. So this just uh. slows you down quite a bit. So I, I feel like we could have hit this Hydra timing even faster. Is um, Whoops, sorry, guys. that was a misclick on the bar. My bad. If we um, executed that opening a little bit better. So let's take a look. Sorry, go back a little bit. <clears throat> when did we build these spores? Okay. Spore, spore. Now you're, you're playing three queen. So you actually don't necessarily need a spore on your natural either. Um, it is Oracle first that you spot. So I would say you don't really need to start spores until the Oracle pops. Because they build so okay. fast, right? They only take uh -huh. 21 seconds to build. And unless it's a proxy, it's it's just look how long it takes. So it, it pops at 345. When does it actually hit a mineral line? And that came on the most direct route. 20 seconds from natural to natural. It takes 21 seconds to build a spore. So basically, that's one way I like to think of it is like, if we want to be a bit greedier on it, we can do that. I don't mind you dropping it a bit early. Technically, what was that? 10 seconds before, 12, 13 seconds before we technically needed it, right? So it's a real yeah. small optimization um, in this scenario. It's just one of those things where because you had the Overlord seeing it, I'm like, oh, yeah, you could have delayed that spore a little bit. I mean... Okay. The 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 time I was casting you, maybe it was versus Australia? I don't know, it was versus someone else. Um, I've cast you a bunch recently. I think it was uh, a bit more significant than that. Like it was like a 12 pool situation where you'd force like heaps of wall offs and stuff. So the tech was always going to be really late for the opponent because it was a real messy other game. And um, 
it's hard to judge in those scenarios, but you are like erring way on the side My of safety. Man. Whereas I think in a gen as a general rule, it's better to just err on the side of greed in that scenario and just be like, nah, it's fine. Cause like you, you kind of have to, the thing is building a few extra Queens is also like insanely good after early pool stuff because that defends like adepts and things like that anyway, right? Glad you liked uh, that Scarlet Bomber Esquire dark Yeah, I'm actually really bad about building Queens. I, work, I, Cause I used to make to one queen per hatch and that was it. I really don't like Queens that much, but they're so necessary. Yeah, I think like the thing is, so you don't do any queen walks, right? Because I think uh, queen walk off a of twelve pool is like actually one of the best ways to kill a Stargate focused player, which is so many Protoss right now. Like if yeah, you get I a usually, bit of a lead, if I twelve pull on Beckett Industries, I'll queen walk. But besides that, not really. Yeah, okay. queen walk's way more powerful, not just because of the meta, but just because your execution. If you're more used to doing more macro openings anyway, because like it the the good like i've got six seven queens just for anti-air and i'm building lots of drones also happens to just doing that smoothly sets you up for that's the launching pad for a queen walk that's why it's like soul is so annoying to play against for a lot of the protoss players because he's just like am i gonna do it or not it looks exactly the same for the first like however many minutes unless he does his really fast one where where they can spot like oh he's taking his gases on his natural like way faster this time oh okay like there's a few little tells if the oracle comes in at the right moment but otherwise it uh -huh. looks almost identical like those those big european ones which solar does as well like 54 55 workers like it looks identical the protoss just has to see you coming across the map with their void ray um sitting in the middle and go oh yeah queens are walking okay <laughs> shit um and that's also why we see people drop a dt shrine abandon their third sometimes and the Zerg actually was never walking. He just pushed his queens forward and then he just walks back to the edge of creep and was like, I was macroing and making a spire the whole time, dumbass. Like there was actually <laughs> there was actually nothing behind those four queens that stepped off creep for 20 seconds and then turned around and walked home. Um, so there's some funny mind games that happen around that matter. I don't say we don't necessarily want to stick ourselves into that. Um, but yeah. Hydra hydras can be somewhat effective. Um Muters are pretty fantastic for sure uh, as as a, a thing to mix in there. But because a lot of Protoss players are playing so um, blindly just greedy, right? Where they're like, I'll make two Void Rays and a third and 66 probes and, and six gases and I have no units. Like definitely looking for things like this quick Hydra Ling. I, I do like this as an option. So um, that's cool. I don't think there's much else to look at in this game. Should we hop to another one? Yeah. All right. Let's go, go, go. <clears throat> all right big thank you so much so i have Spazzin. one from captain ron thank you, thank you everybody today i was playing an na apprentice oh awesome awesome all right thank you smoked salmon i do not know this player Is this like a a known kind of different name for them, or is this then main um, name? Do you know? Their Liquipedia says Bingsky. They're like five seven, I think, on NA. Oh, okay. They they they've been playing for a long time. Then I think Binsky. Binsky Liquipedia. Sung Binsky Lee, American Terran player. Yeah, I've, I've heard the name. Didn't he used to play for Light? Yes, he did. He did play for Light. It's twenty eight now. He's an old dog. Okay. <laughs> Anyone over 16, an old dog being around for a long time. <laughs> um, cool, man. Okay, so so what are we doing here? You're doing a, a hatch gas pool. Yeah, uh, so this game I was just doing a uh, two base meter. This is my kind of my go to on ZVT at the moment. I just I think it's pretty good against pretty much everything. Like I feel like as long as I play well, I can defend anything with it, and it gives. So I really enjoy it. Okay. If I remember correctly, though, you're you're very weak to Hellion run bys with this build sometimes because you you skimp really hard on any safety units, right? So if they four Hellion dive, have you fixed that? Yeah, I, people have been two Hellion diving me lately into three CC, and I keep because uh, I send my as soon as Link Speed finishes, I usually send my Links across the map for a dive in the natural and send one to the main for a scout if they slip mm. up. Uh, and I always forget to make the Links because I usually try and rush to forty four. Because I actually got this build from a uh, Star Killer. I had talked to him with it about it. Okay, and, uh, Star Killer is a, a resident <laughs> madman, so good play to get yeah. some alternate off the off the main 
hive mind of how to play Zerg thought. Yeah. So I was like, well, who's dumber than me, but also better, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Is he better? You peaked at a much higher MMR than Starkiller, my friend. Uh, I think much, uh, much more well-rounded, though. Yeah, he's he's definitely got pretty good range as a player. Um, he actually started using control groups as well, at, like a year or two ago, which was cool. Oh. It was interesting to see him be able to control things. Um, I was like, you're a much better player now. You know how to put units on numbers. Um, it was fascinating. He got as good as he did without that, uh, but but it was good to see him evolve that. So overlord positioning, I would say like, well, you're going to struggle because this overlord's on this pillar and there's just no reason to have your overlord on your pillar defensively. You should be out front the base. I can't signal on the map right now. It's bugged, um, the map. But basically, just maybe up to the right of those Zerglings a little bit. Because uh -huh. you, you should have way earlier warning of where the Hellions and the Reapers are, right? So your Overlord in the top right is like the most extreme example of that's going to give you insanely early warning, which is... It's great. I would put it maybe half a screen further back, at least to start. Um... Obviously, the further back, the easier it is to pull it back if he goes Viking first and save those overlords, pull them back a bit more. But it's not the end of the world if you lose an overlord or two to a Viking, right? That gives up Liberator or Banshee or Battlecruiser pressure or Medivac pressure, right? It's it's not the end of the world to lose some overlords if you're macroing well. But I think having that overlord out front, it just gives you extra warning to make sure your queen's positioned well. If he tries to dart in the main, you might be able to shuffle over and block him on the edge and just force his Hellions to get stuck or go around a little bit. Just gives you a few extra seconds, right? To, to kind of realize what the hell's happening. Mm. Um, so I, I think there's kind of no excuse against Protoss, Zerg, Terran. You've got to have that Overlord out front or you're just going to get surprised by sneaky Banelings, sneaky Hellions, sneaky Adepts. Um, and you're just giving yourself less time to react. So I think that's like a habit you really want to make sure you build in every matchup. Yeah, I use, usually I actually, if I see CC first when my first overlord goes across, that's why I send it, because it, usually I leave it there for proxy racks, and then when I see a CC, I put it towards the middle um, by those destructible rocks, and I'll put it on that pillar. But I guess I just didn't this game for some reason. Cool. Yeah, even, even all the way on that pillar might be a little too far forward for the very start, it, if they're, just because it depends where it sees. But yeah, it's not bad. I mean, it'll give you most of the vision. It's just if they're sitting right out front your ramp or just up to the right on the high ground middle base, then they, they might be able to skim past that overlord without you getting warning. Um, uh -huh. Just remember, there's no anti-air early on. It's nice for them to not see that they're spotted by an overlord. That's useful, right? But it's also not the most important thing till later in the game. Um, so a lot of people just get obsessed over putting their overlords on pillars. And unless your opponent's opened up with two racks, right? And is running Marines around the map, or for some reason there's stalkers on the map in the early game, or your opponent's queen walking you, no one has a reason to have anti-air on the map in the first four or five minutes against Zerg, um, right? It's 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 not meant to really be happening. So I think you should uh, definitely definitely be thinking of it that way. <clears throat> um, other than that, let's look at your order of prioritization, right? So you're going very quick for a gas. What time does our Spire drop? So, okay, it should be about 3.45. You're just a little mineral starved because you were droning really hard. There we go, so 3.50. All right, so just double checking for inefficiency. And do you do what, 16 hatch, 18 gas, 17 pool, by the way? Yep. So you do a third queen immediately and then we go straight layer in the main right as we had 100 gas uh -huh. now yeah yeah this is solid um are we delaying drones a little bit to get that third queen only ever so slightly because you're building the lair and the third queen it's pretty expensive right so it's pretty important uh -huh. to make sure you keep hitting those drones as quickly as possible as the lava just kind of trips out there's only two idle lava for a few seconds not the biggest deal now we've got six idle lava We've got to be spending it. So you're letting yourself get a bit distracted by the Reaper. I think with this sort of two base build, it's so important that you just nonstop hit those drones the moment the lava's available. So you were delaying that. That was about 10 seconds, I think. So check oh. out your units tab. So we're going to see this lava injects pop at three minutes and seven seconds, thereabouts. You do another inject, another inject. You should also be spending your lava at the same time as you inject, right? Uh-huh. 
because you want to get it spent straight away but you get distracted for a few seconds. So it's about, yeah, about 10 seconds, maybe even a little more, maybe about 12, 12 seconds, and then you, then you build some drones there. So just a small thing, but just one of those things where as an aggressive player, you're gonna find if you don't have an attack you're building towards, sometimes you might just be a little bit more disorganized on you know, building drones if you're not actually gearing towards a specific attack, just as a habit that you might fall into. So just, just keep an eye out for that. Um, try to link spending lava as a consecutive action on injects always, right? Because it just that's when your lava is stagnating because you're over three lava per hatchery. So it's not going to be producing any more lava other than the inject lava. It's just a nice way of trying to sync it up a little bit in the early stage. Now you're delaying your third a lot to get these extra two gases, which means you're leaning into the muters more. So the way I think of, of two base muter, right? Is there's two base muter that leans into aggression and a lot more damage kind of needed with the muters. So what is that? That's third and fourth gas super early. Delayed third base, right? And then there's eco two base muter right where it's more like maybe only six or seven muters first round then back to droning and with that one it's third base before going up to third and fourth gas which is normally the one i prefer because i just play a more leaned back style of it so it's just one of those things to keep in mind if you want to if you're feeling everyone's usually pretty fucking well prepared for your spire and they're always realizing kind of what they're up against anyway, because your third's late. Um, you, if you think the reaction is enough, then you should probably do that, right? Just be like, oh, let's get the third a little bit faster. And I'm still going to be able to build a good round of muters. But instead of going eight muters and plus one and a bailing nest here, it's you're like 200 gas short or something. You're like, okay, it's just six muters. It's still enough to one shot SCVs. Gets over there. At the same time, we're not delaying the spire. We're not delaying the first round of muters. It's just a, a bit less gas for it. And our third base ends up being um, a good little bit quicker. And more importantly, we're never undersaturating our natural on minerals because we're taking the gases a bit later, which just means you have a bit more minerals, a bit smoother droning behind it. Um, so that can be be really nice. Um, just to mix in, and I think for you, you're a player who naturally adapts to how your opponents play. So it's easy for you to say, yeah, this guy over prepares, knows I go two base muter. Let's play the more conservative approach. Oh. This player is a greedy piece of shit, and I always do damage with my muters. Let's keep doing it this way. Uh -huh. Oh, always got the upgrade. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes so I'll make a swell lings with this uh, to try and bust because they don't make. If you don't make a turret in the wall, you can punish it pretty hard. But. My man. Uh, yeah. It's actually a really, really dangerous moment for Terran, right? Because there's no combat shields and no one won yet. So if you can hit before those upgrades, that's like your window. And it definitely, if you get a Lynx around, and sometimes you could even just drag a single Widow Mine into the Marines and it's game over. So I do like that. Okay, so it seems like your ordering here is definitely lining up with that aggressive ordering. You are focusing on rallying a few extra muters while just droning your third with the excess minerals. And then you're like, okay, let's go 1-1 one, one upgrades, Bane speed. We've got the fourth base. So the problem here is that you are still in a super aggressive focus because you're not spreading creep properly. So that's the that's the big thing for a two-base mu to play unless we want to follow up with another all-in, which we can do like Vanya style. But um, usually the map control, we've got to use that just a little bit more. Uh -huh. Yeah, I usually... When should I build those extra creep queens, actually, for doing that? Because I never really... Um, I'm never sure when exactly, and I never actually bother with it. Like, I usually if I spread the first tumors and my first queen makes off the natural, or my second queen makes, mm -hmm. and that's it. I just keep with those, and when they die, they die. <laughs> well, that's it. Losing them is definitely a bummer, because normally just one queen can get enough creep out. So I, I'd be very inspired by um, Sue um sue like jesus there were games even not mute not not muter games not two base muter games but he's just like yeah playing normal ling bane muter and i'm like you only have four queens and he's like yeah i can make more drones and then fighting units 
And I'm like, how is your creep still good? And I'm like, what? And he's like, well, I got four tumors down and I spread them nonstop and I never lost one. And I was like, well, yeah, I guess that works. So like, as long as you are spreading them, um, you don't need many tumors, right? People are like, oh, I need like four creep queens to have, have good creeps, right? Especially in this sort of build, you don't. You just need to have like, obviously this map spreads quite a lot, but like if you can get like five active tumors out, it's totally fine. So, I mean, when, when would we squeeze in that queen? I mean, I would say after the third base, right? So yeah. spread creep more behind muters. Um, so probably add extra queen after starting muters. I mean, looking at the way your, your, your third's not even done yet. So if you start a queen yeah. now, right? That can go to the third. And this, this third queen can just be your injecting queen, right? Uh, your your yeah. creep queen, sorry. So it could literally yeah. now, already it's got enough energy for three more tumors. One tumor on the top, one tumor goes across the mineral wall into this rich base. And then three out towards this low ground. One goes south and two go towards kind of the middle. Um, and that's all you need. And you're not going to spread creep perfectly. No one does, right? Nobody spreads creep perfectly. But it's just um, that's especially once again, if you're not finding damage with the muters, that's going to level up in importance. The spreading creep behind it and the droning the third, right? So it's almost like you can get away with really skimping on that if you're doing lots of damage because you've got higher priority, right? But that's more important um, if they're defending really well, especially important if muters aren't, are well defended. Um, so we're going to add an extra queen after starting muters and third queen never... That third queen just stays as creep cream. Creep queen all game long. Um... Yeah, I'm happy for you to play a four queen style. Just make sure you always replace it and re it whenever it dies. Um, okay. And uh, yeah, yeah, I think that that should be really good. I think that makes such a huge difference, dude. So, okay. You defended the Hellions really well, by the way. You had just the right number of Zerglings, like really, really perfect. Um, a lot of two base muted players die to Hellbat timings um because it's just before the muters come out right you get hit at like uh -huh. 4 45 five minutes uh as your spy is about to finish do you struggle with that um depends on the hellbat build like if it's a little uh, one of the delayed ones with banshee or with stem usually it's not that bad but if it's the really fast one with concussive shell marauders or something like or just super super fast hellbats um it can be difficult yeah it really depends because since i don't i don't send a second overlord to scout i kind of rely on these lingus to get the information I get. Um, so sometimes I won't always get perfect information. And then I'll die if I don't get any scouting uh, from it. Because if I don't have any proper warning. I, I almost feel like this is such a good habit that we could build. Is just you you get such an early layer. This game, the ZVP. If your lings don't have a good idea of what's going on. It should almost be a default thing. It's like. It should almost be like overseer scout. Every game. With layer finishing right. So you want to chunk mm -hmm. that up right. So. Hydroden plus Overseer Morph plus Q through production, right? Or in this uh -huh. case, Spire plus Overseer Morph Q through production. And then you can have the rule where it's like Lings saw, you know, saw what's up, saw the tech, saw the tech production. We can skip this, right? So there's like a, a little rule where you're like, oh, no, nah, my Lings got in. I saw everything like this game. Yeah, it's a third CC. I don't need to give a shit. Could he technically do a Hellbat timing? Yeah, but it's it's like going to be a later one. It's not going to be like super fast, you know, Hellbat timing or anything like that. So, okay, cool. Like, I don't really care. But in a game where you don't know what's happening, yeah, you, you morph an Overseer already there um, at 345 when your Spire goes down and you just queue that through the production. I think that's okay. a, a nice habit to build. And I think it's like, it's going to give you more flexibility as a player, right? Uh -huh. I actually used to do that. I'm not sure why I stopped. I think I was talking to some people about it, and we had come to the conclusion that's like, ah, oh, more muters would be all right. <laughs> we'll it's it's expensive, it. so yeah. I mean, we don't want to like just do it every game, right? <laughs> like if everyone's doing three CC and there's never any punishing attacks or things that you actually want to react to, who gives a shit, right? So you could like yeah. you could do that based on the meta, but I like this kind of planning, right? Because it means like, oh, everyone's doing hellbat timings, bam, you've just got that set play. You could just add that one little detail, and it kind of solves everything because you're like. Oh, this is an armory. Okay, drop a bane nest. Add mm. an extra queen. Easy peasy. We're good. One thing I actually uh, struggled a little bit against when it was more in the meta was people would do the one medevac marine drop with the Hellion run by, or sometimes they'd also 
have it with Hellbats, and it's hard to scout which is which if you only see the Medivac. In that case, would I make a reaction spine? Or, so you're like, saying like if they drop or... in the back while hitting the front? Yeah, if I'm not sure which one they're doing, because sometimes it's just they'll use the drop to um, go and drop in the main base and just go with unstim marines while doing a drive-by. Sometimes they'll unload at the front and morph them into Hellbats. And I'll see the Medivac, but I don't usually get the full scout of the armory as well, or I'm not sure. I so would, in that I would case, check, because I think that would be two different builds that you're actually thinking about that you might have conflated there. I'm not, I'm not sure, um, okay. but because so there's like the build where they just go reactor first or marine into reactor right and they just build the eight marine drop and then three hellions that have built one at a time off the factory dart in your natural or third at the same time as they drop your main that could have a hell about timing technically but it would be a pretty soft one um i think we'd kind of want to like look at that game specifically and and see if there's a big tell of it or something like that it's also something where in that sort of game, I think I would probably always be trying to do the Overseer Scout because those are just gen generally builds that are a bit different, right? Like people aren't... Mm -hmm. I, I, I'd want to double check what my opponent's doing in that sort of game because are they going Banshee afterwards? Is there a third CC behind this? Like I find those are, are a little bit more... They're, they're more rare, less mapped out for me. So I'd be a little bit more like, let's just double check what the hell's happening. Um yeah I, I wouldn't build a spine I, I i for you i would imagine a bane nest is usually what you prefer the spine can work for sure because you're so low on queens the spine's like not as powerful as it is if you're doing a five six seven eight queen build because then you've got transfuse plus spine which is unbreakable for hellbats uh -huh. yeah cool um okay awesome all right so i think this is so definitely like creep spray could be good there. Now you're going mutiling Bane, you're droning up, you've got six gases, you're, you're rallying over to your fourth. Um, your third's a little undersaturated, but you didn't quite finish saturating that. We're gonna get a macro hatch. Uh, okay. Very active with your mutas bouncing around. That's good. Uh, so I think, let's actually just look at your muta movement really quickly. Cause you were very focused on the front of the base. So in this sort of game, I think it's really important you build at least a few Zerglings just so you can have a few Ling Spotters to see if they move out. Because for a long period of time, you're very focused on the front. Uh -huh. So for me, I wonder why you didn't go up to hit the natural gases. I think that's always really exposed. And then his, his third is actually very uh, defended, but also go around the very bottom into the main as well. And the good thing about the natural gases on this map is you can hit those and then because there's so much dead space, bounce straight right from the natural gases straight into the main base production and i think it's still early enough you shouldn't be too worried about getting properly cornered because you've always got dead space and areas you can kind of get out of there and i yeah. think like the reactors are obviously massive juicy targets the refineries because that's exposed scvs that you'll get with the balance damage that sort of Thanks stuff the Bezos whereas it felt like you kept hitting the front a little bit too doggedly here and it was almost like you're kind of worried about him moving out and not spotting it right whereas your army is kind of like you're making this a little bit of a simple problem for him by kind of poking in in just a little contained area. Whereas I really like the idea of like, you see how you queued those muters there, just doing a bigger queue at one point once you realize, okay, he's so locked down on the front. Instead, you come back to the same angle that you were going to before. So I kind of look at this as like, it almost looks like we're habitually just staying at the front of the base. What do you reckon? Yeah, I'm actually pretty bad about that. I don't do, I sometimes I'll check the third and then um. I don't normally go into the main that much, um, especially through the right side. I never actually thought of doing that on this map, to be honest. There's so much um, dead space there. It's it's a brutal angle. Same with the bottom yeah. of the main, you know? There's so much, such an easy way in. Yeah, sometimes I'll go there and hit the main refineries and swap between that and the third. But, uh... Yeah, I'm not sure. It might be... Just, I'm not sure if it was a map thing or just... <laughs> just what i was feeling that game i'm just a little bit inconsistent when it comes to things like that at the moment because i'm still getting used to stuff hey are you playing ept today uh i think so yeah okay i forgot to check in myself so i'm just gonna quickly let's see do i have ice scar on my friends hey mate any chance you can late check in me <laughs> <laughs> sorry i missed check in i just just shot him a little message there thought i'd signed up before but i think i missed it maybe i didn't actually click sign in before i thought it would give me a late sign up button oh wait late check-in closes in three minutes okay i just needed to refresh the page 
That's all good. He says, no, I can't because I've already done it. Oh, what a nice admin. How kind of him. Um, <laughs> cool. Okay. Okay. So, um, as we are, as we are running towards the tail end of our, our time for today. Um, okay. So, so looks like you're going for a big Ling Bane timing, just smashing in the front. Um, not much creep behind it. Uh, we've got one macro hatch. Uh, I would like you to have a fifth base with this style as well. Cause you should be playing a bit of a backstab style, right? <clears throat> um, with heavy muta. It's like they might surprise you with a big frontal push. So I like the idea of expanding to both sides of the map at once, right? If you had a fifth in the top, just serves as a macro hatch for now, but it's also an emergency hatch if you have to give up this middle ground because giving up bases with this sort of very muta heavy style is like really important, right? If they just set up a really good bio mind spread, never fight it front on, always go around, always go behind. Um, did you watch Dark First Time from, um, from uh, season finals? That's one of the few games I actually missed. Okay, I, I just cast it yesterday as well. It'll be going up on my YouTube soon because it was such an epic, epic game. It was game one of Dark Time. So you can look up the replay pack is uploaded and everything like that. But um, it's just, obviously that's perfect. We're not going to just copy what Dark does, but he's he's <laughs> dead and he just fights so well from behind with muters and he just gives up so many hatcheries and time keeps setting up these great spreads and killing a base, killing two bases. And he's like, fight me. And Dark's just like, nope. We're going to go around and just keep counterattacking with muters and never fight you front on because because that'll be a disaster. So this attack here, I really dislike from you um, yeah. because everything you, you do, you're so highly skilled and you just did the monkey NA move there, right? <laughs> I'm just going to ball my shit up and just hope that they they basically don't react quick enough. Um, that's You've done so much to put yourself in a good position. Uh, yeah, at this point, you should be, by default, controlling your units better than this. But I can tell you've f 2 You don't have your army control grouped right now, and you're just kind of throwing it at him, right? Yeah, I usually... The way I normally do it is I'll have mutas on something, veins on something, then I'll have, like, a portion of lings I have to run past the marines to tar uh, soak up mines, because most people aren't going to retarget at this level. Um, and that's pretty much what I do, and I just A-move the rest of lings. But I think cool. this fight, I might have uh, <laughs> just a little bit of praying. Yeah, I think you just saw him out there. And you're like, I think I can kill that. And the thing is, because now you've telegraphed it, this has given him so much time. Like he, the, As far as you know, he should have like six Widow Mines spread up here and a bunch of bio pre-spread. Your opponent's not microing that well. Like he's just kind of kept his Marines. He should be pre-spread a little bit here. His mines, he should have more mines over here. Um, and, and he's also like going mega upgrades, mega macro and stuff. So he actually doesn't have that much units right now. But um, you should, by default, always be doing backstabs. If you're playing a 70 drones, like you should absolutely be rolling like 20 banelings in the south into this bunker where you knew that bunker was there. So you would just right-click the bunker, queue into the mineral line, right? You've even got a changeling above that mineral line. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even realize that. So yeah, yeah. I mean, like that's, that's huge. Um, I actually think as well with your style, you should keep your changelings out for, um, on the natural and the third, like just out front, this in between the natural and the third area is the most important area for you to see because that's where you're going to see where his army is a lot with that and it's going to help you choose like where your muters should go or, oh, I think I can pounce on that and take the fight. So whenever you are spamming out changelings, try to just spread them in between the natural and the third because that's usually where his defenses are concentrated or if they're lacking, you can kind of dive in and go, oh, jump on it, you know, if his marines are all clumped up, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, I would sense. say your system for managing that big fight is like way too overcomplicated though. Like your ideal scenario, right? With like lings on a separate control group because fights as they get bigger, they're going to become too um, flexible. I think you want to make sure it's a little bit more manual. Ling Bane, just one hotkey. Mute is another hotkey, right? And I think mm. the main thing there is all you want to do is just box the front running lings and click them kind of through their army. And I always I always explain it as like, you're kind of dragging them diagonally forward. So if you're chasing your opponent up a map, you'll go up to the right and up to the left with those links. So you're just pulling them away from the clump of Ling Bane into the opponent's army, but you're doing it manually with whatever happens to be at the front, because otherwise trying to make sure a small section of links on a separate control group are the first ones to enter a fight this is like not fluid, right? This relies on us having such a artificial amount of control of the game 
that's a game we probably already won five minutes ago, right? Whereas we need to kind of prepare for worse situations, I would say, where things aren't going our way from the start and, and the fights are more fluid and messy and we're backing off when it's bad and we're finding a new angle. So I think it kind of needs to be more fluid there. And I think it's really important for you to just kind of box the links, click them behind the Marines, box some links, click them behind the Marines, maybe spread some banelings out a little bit as well. But other than that, like it's, it's mostly just, it, we want it to be more manual so you can adapt to whatever's in front of you. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually, that's something I notice a lot. Or box looking is like, so I usually just control click almost everything, which is kind of a bad habit. <laughs> I sometimes I'll box like rumbas, like bailing rumbas, but that's about it. I'm actually really bad <laughs> doing that in fights. Yeah, well, it's one of those things where like, if you do get good with control grouping your Ling Bane, you get very used to using like alt, right? Where you're just like, oh, box 20 banelings, alt three. You just queue them to go click in the bunker and into the third mineral line, right? While your army up here postures. And you can do that while threatening to attack on the front and you have no intention of attacking. You just make sure this Ling Bane Muter army jumps right now. He burrows, he stims, he pulls back and you just pull back. And he's like, oh. And then he looks down as his mineral line explodes, basically, right? It's just that classic pull their attention right as the run by hits, right? Or yeah. you do it the other way. The Baneling run by goes in first, that's to pull their attention, and you're actually committing to the frontal fight. But you're making sure the Baneling enters their vision first, the Baneling run by, so that even if it's half a second, one second extra delay on them burrowing their Widow Mines or spreading their Marines, we know what that results in, right? You kill five Widow yeah. Mines before they even set off. Oof, delicious, right? Whether that's shift clicking them with muters, whether it's box detonate on um on widow mines right where you're like oh there's four widow mines in a clump you just box five banelings and just tell them to blow up before the widow mines can fire it's not mm -hmm. directly efficient but it's absolutely worth stopping those widow mines from firing right so there's lots of times you'll do that and it only takes three banelings to kill a widow mine right so if those widow mines ever clumped up at all it's often important you know just click banelings on them or just detonate on them whatever micro you prefer and that's going to be really effective but as you get to this bigger stage there's no reason why we should have to pummel him on the front and the thing is, you're attacking the exact same angle that you kept attacking with your muters for the last four or five minutes. Whereas if your muters were hitting the top right, picking off gases, and then bouncing into the main to go after the add-ons, banelings were rolling in the third. And then the rest of your army is waiting for him to kind of pull out a position for those two. And then you also roll even more banelings into the natural. Like, you're doing so much damage, so many chances for him to make mistakes. Maybe you even just A-move the front army and just hope to just catch his army in disarray. But we want to be more multi-prong. Yeah, my issue right now is a lot of the times I'll have it like usually with when Bane Speed finishes, I'll do the poking at the front with the mutas and then have it run into the third. But it's usually a little too planned out. I don't, uh, I'm very bad about doing it in the moment, you know, just setting them up. Yeah, I think once you get to this stage of the game, you almost want it to just be like a set play where it's like mutas are always harassing. And then once you start building a ground army, you're just setting those up ready to roll in. And you might not necessarily be rolling those in. Thanks for the um, Bezos bugs. But yeah, you can basically like just leave it hidden at the fourth or the fifth base, right? Just waiting. Wait for him mm -hmm. to come out and push you. And then you click them in. Or you wait for your muters to distract them in the back and then you click them in, right? If your opponent's just turtled on three base, obviously you can get big diminishing returns with these sort of run buys. Um, but this is one of the best ways to play against Terran, right? Is Especially if they're doing like a really good Widow Mine parade and they're not just darting on creep. You basically just slow them down with some Banelings and then you just focus 80% of your army on backstabbing them because Widow Mines can't force their way onto creep, right? What does a Terran want to do? He wants to set up a big army on the edge My of creep man. and bait you into fighting him. You're just like, cool, thanks for moving your army away from your base. Now I can kill your economy and I'm just going to every now and then, whenever you try to start shifting onto creep a bit more, I'll just grab 10 banelings from my rally point, click them into your bio mine spread. Your whole army has to stim, spread, fucking run away. You're going to lose a bunch of stuff no matter what. And all I'm doing is just every now and then making more zerglings and morphing more banelings at my rally point while the rest of my muters and lings and banes that were on the map are just ravaging your base. And this is like, with the situations you put yourself in as well, where you're just like, you've got so much map dominance, you're going to get a lot of mistakes out of your opponents and they're going to they're gonna have some big issues. So... That can be really huge. But um, yeah, I think if if we wanted to just be killing our opponent with Ling Bane, Muta, um, I almost would have preferred you stop at like 66 workers, not quite 70. Don't even bother with the gases on the fourth. The fourth is just to transfer workers to. And um, 
and maybe stopped a little lighter on the muters and hit that Ling Bane timing, like the moment Bane speed kicked in, right? Like we were, if we're gonna if we're gonna try to break him on the front, it needs to be crisp, and and you know, you basically just try to roll in by surprise, whereas you telegraphed it, showing it as you chased his army across the map and that sort of thing. So uh-huh. we kind of just want to be like, hey, if we're playing the macro game, focus more on the backstabs, focus more on the setting up the multi prong, and commit more once he's out of position. Um, if we're going for the timing attack, make sure you hit crisp fast timing whereas this game you're kind of in two different minds you tried to break the front but you're also going to a pretty decent work account not the absolute highest but pretty decent some gases you're also adding burrow bailings which is kind of like a slow long-term defensive maneuver right but then you're also uh-huh. forgetting to add two two so it feels like we could be a little more cohesive with your plan at this stage of the game part of that is just develop the okay 66 drones non-stop ling bane backstabs plus muters flying around with the momentum and just focus on taking the correct fights tactically um wait for him to push out surround his army collapse on it when he's at home split up hit his mineral lines roll banelings in um when he pushes out backstab him with 80 percent of your army while your rally point the other 20 percent holds him back like there's you know like all these sorts of plays that we want to kind of map out for depending on exactly what your goal is at that point in the game but it's going to rely on um definitely i think kind of choosing one of those as your main skill and say like treat your ladder as practice for that and work on it really hard right um okay okay i'm just going to do the the three pronged ling bane plus muta's roll muta's hit the main ling's roll in the natural in the third and i'm going to just rinse and repeat over and over and try to make that really natural and feel good at that right and just try to get good at microing that and, and coming in at the right time um and that can be really useful. I guess we've both got to play the tournament, so we better um, we yep. better hop on out as we're out of time anyway. But we've also, I've wrote down quite a few notes there. So things like spreading the creep behind the muters is just going to give you so much more map control. It's going to put a lot of passive pressure on your opponent. It feels really bad to be so turtled up um, when that's the case, right? If there's creep just spreading all over the map. So I think we don't need to be mega macro style there, but whenever I see someone roll in the front with Ling Bane muter, the way you just did there, that's never going to work for us like a Euthermal or, uh, you know, the 6k plus Terrans. You really need to catch them completely off guard for that to work. But yeah. um, unless you're more all in Vanya style, where Vanya will do it with literally zero, zero upgrades, just Bane speed. No upgrades on the muters <laughs> off like five gas, 62 drones. He's like, I have 10 or 66 drones maybe, but he's like, I have, I have 14 muters. 20 like 35 speed banes and 40 zerglings and this has to kill you and he's like super all in on that attack um and that's that that's pretty cool vanya vanya's actually inspiring with how he makes those attacks work but anyway we can we can talk more about this in future so um awesome man i'll let you um play the tournament and good luck dude sweet thanks you same to you hey good luck man chat later